Hello viewers, thank you once again for tuning in. I'm your host, none other than Mr. Spotter Fred. I'm happy to see you once again. We want to continue doing what we like doing most. And remember, we want to deal with financial reporting. Today's session is uh, a little bit new from uh, what we were doing in the previous sessions. And uh, this is uh, in respect to specialized accounts or specialized, uh, uh, you know, specialized financial accounts. We come and say we are dealing with financial reporting. And today we want to look at the specialized, specialized accounts, accounting for specialized transactions, or we say specialized transactions. Now, one of the specialized transactions we are going to look at is um, revenue recognition with respect to higher purchase, accounting for higher purchase. We also want to look at accounting for construction contracts, that is uh, 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 IS-11, and uh, we'll also combine that with the revenue recognition in IFRS-15. So that's what we want to look at. So first, we are saying, A, we have accounting for, accounting for, accounting for higher purchase. Higher purchase, higher purchase, and B, accounting for, accounting for construction contracts construction contracts. This is uh, from IS-11 to now we are using the IFRS 15 and very importantly so that we are able to account for these revenues from construction contracts. Now, let me start off with the higher purchase. Accounting for, accounting for higher purchase, higher purchase. Now, friends, you need to remember, when you talk of higher purchase, this is where you sell goods on credit or you buy goods on credit, whereby you pay a down payment known as a deposit, and the balance of the remaining money or amount will be paid in installments. That is what we have as a higher purchase. So we can say that... Uh, higher purchase, higher purchase, higher purchase is where is where goods and service goods are bought, goods are bought or sold on credit, on credit by by paying by paying a down payment, a down payment, a down payment, known as known as known as deposit deposit and the balance and the balance and the balance paid paid by installments paid by installments now in so in higher purchase you will end up paying an a price known as higher purchase price so you end up paying so the buyer, the buyer, the buyer will pay, will pay an higher purchase price, HPP. HPP is a higher purchase price. So the higher purchase price, HPP, is simply the deposit, the deposit plus all the installments, plus all the installments, that is the HPP. And you should remember the difference between HPP, you should remember that, you should remember this, that the difference between HPP and the cash price, and the cash price will actually be the interest. That will be the interest expense. That's interest. So HPP, and I always advise my students, uh, you don't buy items on higher purchase. It's damn expensive. Buying items on our purchase where you pay a deposit and the balance in installments, you end up paying almost double the cash price. So I advise them, it's important not to buy items on our purchase. It's extremely expensive for nothing. So higher purchase is simply the where you buy goods and you pay a down payment, then you pay the balance over installments over 
maybe two years, three years, five years, or t somewhere five years there. And there are a good number of examples, like uh, the ART, uh, the African Retail Traders, is one of the most uh, you know, common uh, shops that have always um, specialized in that area of selling goods on higher patches. But most of the, for the businesses, they sell both goods on cash price and higher patches so that they can easily, um, uh, they can easily make up for maybe some profits here and there or they can get some quick money. And that is important. Higher purchase is not a very good uh, transaction because if at some point you default paying the installment, my friend, if you default paying even one given installment or two installments according to the contract, they will come the seller will come and repossess and take back the item or uh, take back the good that was sold on higher purchase. Fine. That is important to know. And again now, we have books of accounts. We have the books of accounts, books of the accounts, books of accounts to be maintained, to be maintained, to be maintained, you know, we have uh, A in the books of the seller, in the books of the, let me start with the buyer, the books of the buyer. In the books of the buyer, we should have where the buyer will have the asset account because the buyer is buying that asset. The buyer will also have higher purchase. Higher purchase. Um, higher purchase. Creditors, I have purchased creditors, I have purchased vendor account. The buyer will also have, as usual, will have the bank account. The buyer will also have uh, interest, expense account. The buyer will also have... Uh, We'll also prepare final accounts. Uh, we'll also prepare, prepare final accounts. Final accounts, e.g. Uh, that is, let me say that is, that is A or Roman 1. Prepare uh, general, uh, general uh, statement statement of profit or loss account we'll also have the statement of financial position of financial position not forgetting not forgetting that we can also have the statement of changes in equity but that's not very important this is we are looking at it from the point of being an sme yeah? fine Apart from that, we'll also have in the books, in the books, in the books of the seller. In the books of the seller. In the books of the seller, we are going to have a HP debtors account. HP debtors account, you know. Uh, we are going to have the HP sales, sales or revenue account. We may have the HP trading, the HP trading account. Sometimes when they are maintaining or they are doing both cash sales and higher purchase sales, you may have an HP trading account. But sometimes it's important just to prepare one general trading profit and loss account. So we are saying we can have about from that we have the interest, we have the interest income, interest income account. Right. We also have uh, what refer the provision, the provision, the provision for unrealized profits account. Then we also have, apart from the provision for unrealized profits account, we'll have now the HP. No, let me just say the general item. We have, um, uh, we have, um, we have the general, the general the general statement, the general statement of profit or loss account and the statement of financial position. 
statement of financial position. Not forgetting items like also bank account is also important. Bank account, just but to mention, just but to mention, uh, it is not necessary at this level to open a bank account for each uh, transaction. We don't need to for each entry. We don't need to, but the main items that we'll be focusing on are these the HP, HP items because we are specifically talk about higher purchase. Friends, we should now talk about... Uh, how do we, uh, you know, maintain in uh, the books of uh, in the books of the buyer? Now, before we even talk about the books of the buyer and the books of the seller, there is this element of um, accounting for interest. You know, when we talk of that interest, the interest here, accounting for interest, we may either use the instalment method or we use the uh, uh, we use the suspense method. Yeah. We have methods, methods of accounting for, methods of accounting for, uh, or uh, apportioning, or apportioning, apportioning interests, apportioning interests, methods of app apportioning interest. Now, interests can be either we can use the installment method. In installment method, we are going to recognize the interest at the uh, in the interest every year. We are going to apportion it every year, and in that case, we actually look at it as the, the accrual kind of based method, where we recognize the interest for only that particular period of the installment, only that particular period of the installment. Then we also have the suspense, the the suspense method. The suspense method is where we are going to recognize interests, the all of that interest in the first year. But thereafter, we release it in every installment or in every year. Thus, the suspense is not one of the most recommended. The installment method is actually the best because it goes uh, uh, hand in hand with the accrual concept. We also have the actuarial. We have the actuarial. We have the actuarial method. We have the actuarial method. So those are some of the elements, but uh, we can always single out this, the installment method, where we are going to recognize our, our, our interest in each installment as we pay that installment because it is uh, in harmony with the accrual concept. Then we also have um, the methods, methods of recognizing, of recognizing, of recognizing, of recognizing, uh, gross profit, gross profit, gross profit from from the from the point from the seller's view, from the seller's from the seller's view, from the seller's view. So, what are these methods of recognizing gross profit from the seller's view? A, we have uh, cost recovery, cost recovery, cost recovery method. We have the cost recovery method. B, we have the installment method. The installment method. Friends, we need to remind ourselves that when we talk of cost recovery method, it's not the best. Cost recovery method is that you recognize gross profit or the seller will recognize gross profit only and only when they have recovered the, cost, the original cost of the asset or the original cost of the goods that was sold. That's not the best. You only recognize gross profit when you have recovered the original cost of the good that you sold. It does not uh, go hand in hand with the accrual concept of accounting. So it's not the best that you only recover gross profit or recognize the gross profit when the original cost of the goods you sold has been recovered or once it has been recovered that the installment has been paid to extend that now we are able to cover the original costs is not the best. But installment method is where we are going to recognize the gross profit based on the cash we have received. We are going to recognize the gross profit based on the amount we have not received. This is the best. This is what we will always be preferring, the installment method, where we recognize, the, uh, uh, we recognize our interests 
uh, I mean our gross profit, which can also be in form of interest, our gross profit based on the amount we have received and based on the amount we have not received. In this case, we are going to use for installment method, we are going to determine or realize our gross profit. Thank <music> you.